What's going on guys, it's Z back here once again with another video, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the 2020 Porsche Macan Turbo. The Macan Turbo sits at the top of the model range, and new for 2020, there are some changes to its interior and its exterior. While most of these upgrades may seem minor, and in some cases more cosmetic, Porsche claims the vehicle has not only gotten quicker, but also faster while continuing to boast sportiness, design, and everyday practicality. One of the biggest changes for 2020 has taken place under the hood. Its twin turbo V6 has been downsized from 3.6 to 2.9 liters, However, horsepower has been increased from 400 to 434, and torque is now down an enormous amount from 406 to 405 pound-feet. Top speed is slightly higher at 167 miles per hour from 164. Up front, we have a very aggressive fascia, LED lighting as part of the PDLS Plus package. One of the most notable differences between this Macan Turbo and the original Macan Turbo is that the LED light bar that used to be right here where the trim piece is now is no longer there. It looks very reminiscent of the Macan GTS with the sport design package. The original Macan Turbo did have two light bars that went top and bottom and now they're sort of integrated into the same one. In the center, we have more air intakes, and these are actually active air intakes. They open and close depending on how much air the engine needs to get as you're driving along. The wheels on this car are 21 inch 911 turbo design wheels. We have sport design mirrors, which in the past were an extra add on option. Coming around to the back, we have quad pipe exhaust finished in this nice chrome. One of the most notable differences back here is that the tail light is now a wrap around tail light. It's just one LED light bar that goes from one side to the other. And all Porsche models are doing this from the 718 to the Cayenne, Panamera, Taycan. This is the way the design is going. Up top, you'll also notice that the spoiler if you even want to call it a spoiler. Got a little bit more aerodynamic. It now has sort of a little hole in the middle of it and on the sides. Rear diffuser. This car is equipped with the keyless go system, so you just have to walk up to the door handle, grab the inside, it unlocks, and then to close and lock it, just tap the handle. And that's it. The interior is finished in brushed aluminum and the leather is a gate gray. I love the stitching all throughout the interior on the door panels, all the way through the seats and the steering wheel. These seats are the 18-way adjustable with lumbar support. To start the car, put your foot on the brake. And as every Porsche, it's on the left-hand side. Coming into the rear, as you can see, footroom is definitely not very ample. Headroom is also the same. If you are over six foot, you're probably going to have a hard time sitting back here for long periods of time. I'm five foot eight, and I'm pretty comfortable where my legs are. I'm not too claustrophobic back here. There's also these cutouts if you are a little bit taller. This seat is moved forward a little bit. It's not terribly close to that front dashboard so if you are sitting up here you probably be comfortable average person that sits back here is definitely going to be okay if you have four people if you have four adults you'll be fine if you have a fifth person in the center this person is definitely not going to want to be back here for more than 45 minutes I can tell you that this panoramic roof is beautiful and it definitely adds some much needed openness to the cabin however it limits headroom space because you could see this piece right here that goes all the way to the front, which has this very nice Alcantara headliner on it, is limiting people who are sitting, obviously, on the outside seats. 
The person in the middle has a little bit more room because this roof does obviously go up higher than where the Alcantara headliner is. Just something to think about if you are a tall individual or you foresee yourself having tall individuals in the rear. The back seat is as luxurious as it is in the front. We have cup holders and the armrest. To open the trunk, there's a hidden button built right into the windshield wiper. Back here, there's actually a surprising amount of space. It's a rather wide car, so you are going to get quite a width back here for you to be able to store golf bags or luggage. And down here you have your spare tire with your Bose surround sound system subwoofer. It's a very large sub. Give you that great bass. And on the side you have a 12 volt power outlet and then just a little storage mesh area. This little button right here allows you to raise and lower the rear of the car. So if you have some cargo that's pretty heavy and you need to have assistance to get it up into the car, just hold the button down and you'll see the rear end slowly lower. All three seats do fold down, so if you have some luggage that needs to fold through the center, you could fold that one down individually or you could fold down either the left or right hand sides individually. To close the trunk, just one touch of a button. Up front, we don't have much going on that has really changed, but we do have a very large high definition touchscreen display. And then in the steering column, we have a steering wheel that is the multifunction sports steering wheel. All of the buttons in the center have not really changed in this Macan Turbo. They're not like those you see on the Cayenne, which are now sort of integrated into the actual console. They're sort of just touch buttons. These are physical buttons. As I mentioned in the back seat, we have a Alcantara headliner, which goes all the way around. Looks very nice. You could see it in the back seat and you could see it as the sun hits it. Can't really tell right now, but the visors are also coated in it as well. <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite aggressive and violent when you step on it. And that exhaust note is brilliant from Porsche. The sound designers by... Uh, Yeah, that sound is just amazing. To be absolutely honest, when I first started up this car, I thought that the exhaust sounded a little bit muffled compared to the 3.6 liter Macan Turbo that came out in 2014. And now that I've actually been driving this car for a few minutes, the exhaust is incredible. I really think that this car, despite having a reduced displacement coming down to a 2.9 liter turbocharged V6, this car's sound is incredible. The backfires are awesome. I love when it uh, when it switches gears and you get that burble. Let's do a little downshift here from third and a second, let you hear it. Second and a first. Going over bumps in this car is actually pretty nice. It's got the Passim Porsche Active Stability Management System. And when you hit little potholes and divots in the road, it takes them very nicely. If you didn't have the air suspension in this car, I don't really know how much of a difference it would make just because the chassis overall is very solid. And going around turns, the car takes the turn like it's on rails. And every Porsche does that. I mean, it's. It's very hard to find a Porsche, even in the most standard settings, like a base Cayenne, a base Macan, um, even a base Panamera that's gonna go into a turn and have any body roll. This car is extremely solid, and being the turbo variant definitely helps with that, even though the chassis are pretty much the same across all of the Macans. And going around turns, it just seems very athletic. If I go around a turn with some speed, it's still gonna feel like it's a smaller car. You don't really get the feel of a large car or a large SUV from driving this. This car basically, I've seen many people compare it to driving like a 911 on stilts or even a Cayman on stilts. It's just got that really light athletic feel to it. It's very agile. And I think that's what Porsche tried to do by creating this car. They wanted to make a crossover SUV that had a lot of 
emotion to it, but also still was able to be capable for everyday life. They wanted to be able to make a car that wasn't necessarily as large as the Cayenne and, as, and, and feel as heavy as the Cayenne and derive that performance from it. Alright guys, that pretty much concludes this review of the 2020 Macan Turbo. As always, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.